Let's go back to the Cook Neon hotline. Uh, Cook Neon, uh, for new signs, they will help you design it, and they will also install them to old signs. They will help you to repair and keep them up. They do it all, Cook Neon signs, on the web at cookneon.com. J.P. Plant, he is the play-by-play voice for the Lawrence County Wildcats. He joins us on the Cook Neon hotline. Uh, J.P., I listened to part of your broadcast tonight, and uh, Lawrence County got the uh, d- couldn't get the win tonight, but might have got a win uh, in terms of uh, tiebreakers, right? Yeah, yeah, we were kind of going over a lot of tiebreaker scenarios, and ultimately paying a close. You know, for Lawrence County, quite simple. If they'd have won tonight, they were in as a three seed. But uh, if that weren't going to happen, other games we were looking at, of course, Giles County. If they beat Tullahoma, that helped Lawrence County with the tiebreaker there. But also. Strangely enough, we were looking at Baylor at Father Ryan. <laughs> and, you know, a game in Division II uh, that you, know, you wouldn't think would mean anything, but we knew if the scenario played out, then Lawrence County, Spring Hill, and Giles County would all be tied, and uh, you'd have to go down to the third tiebreaker, which is your opponent's number of uh, teams with wins uh, or 500 winning percentage or more. So that's what we were looking at. And if Baylor had beaten Father Ryan, Giles County beat Tullahoma, it didn't matter what Lawrence County did tonight, and that was the case. Uh, we're talking to J.P. Plant. He is the uh, play-by-play voice for the Lawrence County Wildcats. Uh, uh, big uh, big hype for the homecoming uh, festivities and stuff, but uh, it turned out that it was a... Uh, uh, it was a tough night for the Wildcats as uh, uh, Spring Hill, the Tyler o- Olin uh, that everybody talked about in the preseason, he showed up tonight, didn't he? Yeah, he really did. And, you know, we kept, uh, you know, of course, Spring Hill was uh, predicted by several to possibly win the region. And we knew what kind of uh, experience that Tyler and Oden had and, and uh, what kind of playmaking ability he had. Maybe he hadn't seen it in a lot of games. Well, he did show up tonight, as you mentioned, and uh, had a big game over 100 yards rushing. Only threw for 72 yards, but the first play from scrimmage threw 52 yards to his uh, to his brother Justin Oden, and they were off and running. Uh, Dante Smith for Spring Hill had a really nice game, but uh, unfortunately for Lawrence County tonight, their quarterback Jackson McAnally uh, was injured, a shoulder injury late in the in the game, and had to come out and did not finish. So we'll wait and see what happens with him if he can play next week in the playoffs. Hunter Smith came in and uh, did a nice job uh, filling in there towards the end. But Spring Hill, the, the good Spring Hill came out tonight, and uh, they looked impressive in their win. J.P. Plant from the X Sports Radio Network in Lawrenceburg joining us on the Friday Night Thunder Scoreboard Show. Dennis Weaver and Josh Peterson. You know, J.P., after the, the Tillahoma win uh, for Lawrence County, I kind of thought, and I think people thought they might kind of springboard them here at the end of the season with a couple of games that people thought were winnable. It's not really happened, though. Uh, what's kind of gone wrong for Lawrence County, and they you think they're going to be able to bounce back and make some noise in the playoffs? Well, you know, we kind of thought that too. You know, looking at possibly a five and five season and uh, rolling as you make it to the playoffs, but uh, kind of a weird game at Lewis County a week ago. They uh, they ran seventy plays to I think Lawrence County's thirty, and uh, Lawrence County had a punt return uh, called back to a, a late penalty, and uh, it was just some weird things happened in that game. Didn't play out in their favor. Uh, but tonight, some you know, while they didn't get the win, they got some weird scenarios, and and ultimately they're in as a third seed. We talked about it in our post game show. Ultimately, tomorrow morning, no one's really going to care how they got in, but, but they're in nonetheless. And and that's uh, I know uh, David Marston is what he's looking for to, to next week against uh, Livingston Academy. And talking with uh, Murphy Fair on our Exports Live show yesterday, talking about that region outside of Stone Memorial, not necessarily a strong region, so. You get in, and you might have a chance to win a game or two. All right, JP, we need to let you go. Uh, we hope to talk to you again next week in the post game, and good luck in the playoffs. Okay. All right, thanks. We appreciate All it. Right. Thanks, guys. Uh, that is J.P. Plant with the Exports Radio Network, our new partners uh, down in the uh, southern Middle Tennessee area. Let's